Hey guys, uh, let's continue with this example on voltage joints and uh, sorry about the external noise. Uh, we have a project coming in, happening next to my building, uh, so it's beyond my control, unfortunately. Uh, if you have questions, guys, regarding any of the stuff that I'm discussing over here, please feel free to shoot me an email and I'll be happy to help you understand if you are missing any information. Alright, so uh, let us work on this example and uh, please open it as well while I'm working on it so you can, in case you can see some stuff over here. Uh, so in that example basically, uh, it is required to resist a 36,000 pounds external force, right? So this is your P, uh, using a number of, uh, we don't know what, what is the number, right? Uh, using 5A11 uh, UNC. Uh, two and quarter grade five bolt, right? So we have the size designation of the bolt. So this will tell me what AT is, and uh, we don't really care. The length usually doesn't mean anything over here. A grade five bolt that will tell me the proof strength, and we know the grip is 1.5 inch. So we need to calculate the joint constant, and then we need to calculate the number of bolts required if the design, uh, if the design factor is two and the connection will be reused. So connection will be reused basically, this will tell me what? This will tell me my preload force, right? Uh, which is 0 0.75, right? Uh, based on what we just discussed earlier, right? So if the connection is to be reused, basically it means that you're gonna disassemble this and then uh, reassemble it later. Uh, then your preload is gonna be 0 0.75 AP multiplied by, or sorry, AT multiplied by SP. So we need to calculate the joint constant, right? And then we said we have an equation for the joint constant, which is equal to what? So C is gonna be equal to what? KB divided by KB plus KM. How do you know KB and then how do you know KM? Basically, uh, we have equation form, right? Um, all right, so we're gonna start by, you know, C is equal KB divided by K plus KM, and then we already had that equation. How do you find AD and AT? You are going to find, well, AD is simply based on the major diameter, right? And the major diameter, if the size designation is below 12, you're gonna get AD from here. And if the size designation is greater than 12, you're gonna get it from here. So it would be whatever that number here, which is a basic equal. One quarter here, I have 0 0.2500. 5 sixteenths, I have 0 0.3125. Half is one half. Um, <coughs> So we calculate AD pi over four, five eighths. Why is it five eighths? Because in the problem, basically it's given to me as five eighths, right? The first number here is, uh, sorry, it's here, right? Five eighths, right? So this is your five eighths. So five eighths power four, five eighths squared. So I got my AD. How do I get my AT? Again, I'm gonna look it up, right? So I have my five designation is five eighths. And how many how many uh, t's per inch? Basically, I have eleven. So I'm gonna look up in the first column, right? So five a's and then eleven. So my tensile area is gonna be here, zero point two two six. If you can't see it here, check it in your notes, uh, which is here, zero point two two six. Modulus of elasticity is gonna be uh, so for steel it is thirty times ten to the six psi. Uh, it is actually given to you here, right? 12 times 10 to the 6. This is your E. And then a length of the grip. Uh, in this case, uh, they give us in this diagram, it is half and half. So 0 0.75 is the length of the threaded portion and then 0 0.75 is the length of the non threaded portion. So I can find KB, right? Uh, I can find uh, KB and then I can find uh, and then I can find basically my C value, right? So KB basically is the stiffness of uh, the bolt and it is going to be equal to this value. Uh, this is the stiffness of the bolt. And then KM basically, you're gonna do what? You're gonna look up this equation, right? So we already provided you this equation. So you simply substitute the values over here and then you get KM. And then you do what? Then you can calculate C. By the way, guys, how did you get the equation for KB? We already described how we get the equation of KB, right? This is basically a rod with two different areas and then two springs in series. I have an equation for it. You find KM, then you find C, 
Then the second part of this problem is we need to find the number of bolts that is uh, that would lead to a safety factor of two. So your load factor n is going to be equal to two, right? So this is my load factor. So basically two is going to be equal to n sp times at minus fi, and then the whole thing is divided by cp, right? So I need to solve for n. Uh, how do I get SP and then AT? I am, I'm going to get this because I know the grade is 5, right? And I know my FI based on this value. And I know my force P, which is equal to how much? 36,000. And then basically now I can solve for N in a very nice and easy way, right? So N is going to be equal to this. So now I can solve for number of bolts. Uh, Looking up SP for grade 5 bolt, SP would be equal to 85 KSI uh, and FI is equal to 0 0.75 AT times SP, which is here. Then I can find the number N is equal to 6.05. So I need basically 6.05 bolts. So if I use 6 bolts, basically my safety factor will be less than 2. So I need to use a second number integer that would... Uh, um, make my safety factor probably a little bit greater than 2, so we need 7 volts. We can't work with 6.05, right? If you use 6 volts, your safety factor will be less than 2. If you use 7 volts, your safety factor would be greater than 2, slightly greater than 2. Uh, I could, for example, here ask you to find a safety factor. To find a safety factor, after that, you have selected that integer number of volts. All right, guys, so that is it for this example.